And so we're good at asking God questions, but, but every now and then God will stop you, Sister Sally, and God says, I've got a question for you. Wow. God will stop you and say, you'll be asking all these questions. I need to ask you a question. Son of man, shall these bones, can these bones live again? Uh, I'm going to go to the Word of God. I'm speaking today from uh, the subject called It's Not Too Late. It is not too late. This is a message that I was really looking for a Mother's Day message. It's not so much a Mother's Day message as I thought. And I was trying to figure out, God, what should I do? I was searching and searching for a message. I said, God, I could go and preach about the um, Shulamite nice woman. Um, this morning, but, but this is not what God wanted me to speak to. He wanted me to speak to this message uh, and tell you that it's not too late. And I don't know who this is for, but praise God. God wants you to hear that it's not too late. Can you look at the person beside you and tell them it's not too late? Praise God. The flowers fades and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord, it shall abide and remain forever. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 37, this chapter is one of those more famous scriptures in the Bible that most of us know. Uh, we've heard it, we've probably read it, we've heard messages on it, and um, even the very name by which it is called, the Valley of the Dry Bones, you might have heard it referred to as such as well, gives or telegraphs for us what the scripture, what the chapter is about. It is about the awesome power of God, of our God. Praise God. And we know that our God is awesome. Hallelujah. We know that he's powerful. We know that he can do mighty things. That our God can do great things. Glory be to God. That if it's anything that God cannot do, it's just to fail. Praise God. Because my God can do all things but fail. And so the scripture reminds us, Ezekiel reminds us in Ezekiel 37 that our God is above all and he can do anything for you even this morning. Come here. Praise God. The valley of the dry bones is a reminder from God that I can do anything that you need me to do whenever I believe me to do it. There is nothing that can stop me from doing what I need to do. I can bring the prodigal out of the pig pen. Praise God. I can make sickness jump out of your body and flee. Hallelujah. I make demons tremble simply at the sound of my name. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm trying to tell you that we serve an awesome God this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so the scripture is a reminder to us uh, that God is great, he's awesome, he's magnificent, he is powerful, and isn't that what we want to get to in our lives? Uh, we have so many issues sometimes, and we have so many problems sometimes, and some of us are even sitting here listening to me uh, this morning, and on the other side of your assembly, Read your cortex. You are wondering how am I going to fix this problem that I'm going through. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you. You're here with me this morning, but on the other hand, you're wondering when I leave here, when I get back to that problem, how am I gonna deal with this problem that I'm going through? And I'm here to tell you that God is able. Praise God. If Amen. You dead bones, Amen. God can bring a miracle in your life. Amen. And that's what God is reminding us to do. And, and we think about the scripture and the scripture reminds us that we get to the valley of the dry bones and those bones are going to come alive. And I want things to come alive in my life. I want my job to come alive. I want my career to come alive. Hello, somebody. Amen. I Amen. Want my Amen. Life to come back to life. Praise God. I want, I want things around me to come back to life. Things that seem dead, things that seem off track, I want them to come back to life. Pastor Mark. And, and, and God is reminding us to Ezekiel. But, but here's the problem. The problem is that if we jump to the miracle so quickly, we miss out on the movements that God is making. Sometimes we run to the miracle too quickly. And, and, and God is saying the miracle is great, but if you go to the miracle, you will miss out on what I do to get you to the miracle. Hello? Amen. 
God is speaking to Ezekiel and we need to look because in the first chapter it's very, very important. God, Ezekiel says, and the hand of the Lord yeah. was upon me. Praise God. He says, the hand of the Lord. Now, now the Bible tells me, the problem in the scripture, sister, sight is that the Bible tells me that Joshua, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. What the Bible is telling me that God's hand was upon him. And, and what, what Ezekiel is showing is that he's showing us at what we call an anthropomorphic or anthropomorphism term. All right? And it's a term where we attribute something of human characteristics onto an inhumane uh, uh, entity. He's saying that God has a hand. Yes, praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And, 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 and God is a spirit, and spirits don't really have a body. You remember that? A spirit doesn't have a body, but, but he says that God has a hand. Okay, God has a hand when he has a when he's a spirit, and, and Jesus has not come yet in the body of man. But what he's saying is that God is so much God that when he looks down and he sees that I need something, if he needs to form a hand, hello, he's going to form a hand to move in my life. Amen. An anthropomorphic term. I don't worry, I'm not going to keep you long. The Bible talks about the hand of the Lord. Psalms 34 verse 15 tells us about the eyes of the Lord. He sees you, Sister Sally. He sees you, Sister Patricia. He sees you quiet, but he sees what you're going through. I love my God because what God is saying, I know what you need, praise God. And I know how to get you what you need. And if I need to form a hand, hello somebody. I'm a spirit, but if I need to form an eye, I'm a spirit, but if I need to grow ears so that I can hear you, I am your God. Amen. Amen. The God is so good and so much interested in helping us that, that he will form an anthropomorphic part on his body. He will, he will even go as far into what we call zoism. Or zo zoomorphism is the right term. Praise God. What is zoomorphism? It's, it's when God says, I, 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 you don't need a hand right now. You don't need an eye right now. You don't need an ear right now. You need a different form right now. And, and Psalms, Psalms tell me, in, in, um, in Psalms, uh, sorry, Romans, uh, Revelation, yes, Psalms 91, he tells me that he will cover me under his feathers. Yes? And yes. God says, yes. I, I will grow feathers for you. He Amen. Says, I want to protect you. When I want to keep you, I will grow feathers for you. Revelation 5 and verse 5 tells me John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He was brought up to heaven, John said. And John said, There is a book that was sealed in heaven. And John said, I wept much because there was no one that was found worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. And one of the elders said to me, Weep not. Hallelujah. The lion of the tribe of Judah passed by. He has prevailed and he is overcome and he is worthy to open the book and to lose the seals thereof. Here is my God who was a hand. He has a, a, an ear and he has an eye. And over in Psalms 91, he says, I will grow feathers for you. But right now, you don't need feathers. You need the conquering lion. Praise God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Isn't it the, the psalmist that says, But thou, O Lord, many there be that trouble you. Many are there that rise up against you. Hallelujah. Many are there that say, Hallelujah, brother Gavin, of my soul, there is no help for him in God. But when the psalmist got a cup, sister done it and said, But thou, O Lord, are a shield unto me. My glory is the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. And I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me. And deliver me from all my troubles. All fears. my troubles. Amen. Praise God. And, and, and so God said, before you get to the miracle, look at what I'm doing. My hand is upon you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? My hand is in your life. My hand is moving. Yes. I might not see the miracle yet, sister. No, but I just want to know that God's hand is there in yes. my life. Praise God. Yes, so yes, one Lord. Lord. Was there, number two, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord led him, carried him. Yeah. It led him. When God's hand is upon you, number one, His hand is upon you. That's, that's the first thing we need to know that God's hand is upon me. I hear Him. I feel His presence. I need to be in the presence of God. Hello? Amen. Because I need His hand upon me. And so I need to have His hand on me all the time. Number two, when His hand is upon me, He will carry me. He will lead me. Yes. He leadeth me. Praise God. Oh, you know, oh, Amen. God. Praise God. Oh, you know, he leadeth me. Oh, blessed thought. Oh, blessed thought. Praise God. The word will have a comfort. Yeah. So, so He says, one, when my hand is on you, then you expect me to lead you. Let God lead us, ladies and gentlemen. Let God direct us. Let yes. God guide us. Let God show us where to go. Praise God. God, God, will, God will show me the pitfalls that are up there. God will show me the traps. Hello? That are set for me. God will show me the wrong doors that are open and he didn't open them. Yes. And, and when I allow God to lead, God will shut some doors. Yes, some doors will get shut that I'm not supposed to go through. Praise God. And yes. while you're worried and praying about shut door, and you're saying, God, why did this opportunity go away? God is saying, Why are you praying about shut doors? You should be rejoicing that I'm leading you. I am the one that shut doors that no one can open, but I open doors. Oh, yeah, Amen. 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 With that is that he says he carried me into a valley <laughs> of dry bones passing out. The problem we have is that the problem we have is that God, when God is leading us, sometimes he leads us into what looks like mess. Yeah, right. Lord have mercy. Sometimes he actually carries me into the valley. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he actually carries me into the into the, 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 the what looks like a mess. You know, God will lead you into a valley sometimes. Yes. The Bible says that in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says that the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. Yes, yes. yes. The Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, Sister Lord, to be tempted yeah. of the devil. That's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And when God is leading you, you say, God, how could you be leading me when I'm going to hell? Mm -hmm. I'm leading you into this because I have a plan for your life. I'd rather not lead me into a mess than the devil Amen. Me into a mansion. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Lead me, Lord. Somebody say, lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lead me, Lord. Lord. Says, his hand is upon you. He says, I have my hand upon you. I am what you need when you need it. I give you on demand. Whatever you need. I am that I am. Talk about it all the time. Number two, he says, uh, he will lead you. Number three, sometimes he will lead you into a mess. But, 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 but the mess that God leads you into is just a precursor for where God wants you to go. Hallelujah. And Amen. You see God's hand on you. Whenever you see God is leading you, even if it is in a mess, you look at yourself and start to say to yourself, I am going somewhere. Lord, yes. Lord, this morning. I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. It might look like I'm going around, but I'm going somewhere.
somewhere. It might look like I'm going into trouble, but I'm going somewhere. Why? Because God is leading me, Sister Elsa. He's leading me, Sister Patricia. He's leading me, Brother Chris. I am going places. Amen. Amen, Mother Victoria. He's leading me. I'm going somewhere. And so, and so God says, before you get to the miracle, don't, don't, don't be little. Praise God. The small things. The Bible says that uh, the day of small beginnings. Yeah. yeah, don't discount your day of small beginnings because God will use a small thing, uh, yes. uh, an immature thing, a thing that you don't really, wouldn't really choose for yourself. God will use that, hallelujah, and push you and propel you to where he wants you to be. And it might look uh, like you're going around, it might look like, ah, oh, God, you're choosing the wrong thing for me. But God says, you are going some places. Yes. God says, you are going somewhere. I have something for you. Yes. And God says, sometimes I have to take you through this because I have to prepare you for what is to come. Mm -hmm. Sister Lisa, yes. isn't you? She said, Lord, prepare me. Hello. To be a sanctuary. sanctuary. People yes. are holy. Try and true. Sometimes God, when we sing in the song, and God says, I am preparing you. In the valley, I am preparing you. Hello? Yeah. You're not hear what I'm saying to you. Yes. Preparing because when God is not working on the blessings for me, Sister Patricia, he's working on me for the blessing. Yes. 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 In between. In between, God is working on me. In between my, 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 my mountain top and my mountain top, God is moving and working on me. Praise God. No, God leads them into a valley. He leads them into a valley. And the Bible says that the problem is that the valley uh, is full of dry bones. Dry bones. Dry bones. Uh -huh. And the, the dry bones, the Bible tells us that the bones are many and the bones are dry. Good God Almighty. It's not just many bones, and it's not just dry bones. You understand what's going on? It's many and they are dry at the same time. <laughs> you have a problem with your life and say, it was this even bad, but it's everything. <laughs> everything bad. So he says, I was carried into this valley of dry bones, and it caused me to pass round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. Sometimes we have a problem, and we can handle the problem in, in what I call the WST way. WST, what do you mean by WST? WST means that uh, uh, sometimes you can walk off your problems. <laughs> you can walk. You know, sometimes you pick your toe, you pick your foot, something, and, you, and they say, well, just walk it off. And you walk it off, and, and in, in a couple of minutes, you're okay. Sometimes walking is good for you. You're on a call, you're doing something, you have stress in the house, and you just go for a walk. And you clear your mind, Sister Maka. Pass them out. You clear your mind, praise God. You go for a walk. And you clear your mind, and walking actually activates certain, it's an exercise, it activates actually certain chemical compounds that help you to feel better. Yeah. And so you start to feel better about the problem. And the problem may not necessarily go away, but you can walk it off. And you come back refreshed. You can come back and you can do that call because you saw the nature. You saw something outside. Your mind has been clear. Yes. You know, times you can sleep it off. <laughs> Some of us are like that, Sister Ellison. You sleep. You sleep. And sleeping is good. Brother Chris, sleeping is good. You sleep and you rest. You know, when uh, Elijah was, uh, uh, was chased by Jezebel, Jezebel said, I'm going to kill you. Uh, I'm going to make your life like one of these 450 prophets that you kill, that you destroy. The Bible says he ran, he ran away from her. And he went into the, uh, into the mountains there, into a cave. And the Bible says that the angel came to him and the angel said to him, sleep now. Gave him a cake and then he said, sleep now. Right? He says it's time to sleep, just rest. You have a problem when you're, when, when you're stressed out, when you're tired, you think about things differently. Hello? Say amen. Amen. Some of us need to just sleep. Some of us need to sleep to lie down and sleep. Some of us need more sleep. 
but it's an inner man. <laughs> but he said, I wish my spouse was here in this. <laughs> yeah, you can walk it off, sometimes you sleep it off. Because again, you're restored when you sleep, you're refreshed when you sleep, you're renewed when you sleep. <laughs> you wake up better, you wake up uh, more uh, revitalized when you sleep, and you can sleep it off. Number three, you can talk it off sometimes, some of us don't need rest, we don't need walking, we don't need sleeping. Some of us are good at talking it off. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk and talk, and we just need somebody to talk to. We just need to know that there's somebody who hears us. Praise God. I don't need you to fix my problem. I just need you to be there as a listening ear. Praise God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? And so we can walk off some problems. We can sleep off some problems. Some problems, we can just talk about them, and we feel better about them. Praise God. Maybe men are not so good at talking. Maybe women are better at talking than men are, generally Amen. speaking. <laughs> so they will get together, they will form the group chats, they will do all that kind of stuff. <laughs> right? They will sit down and talk, and the women's ministry always strong. <laughs> the men's ministry always strong. <laughs> always trying. Because the women will get together and they'll just talk about everything and they come up and they feel good. But we keep it inside. There are certain things that you need to talk about, praise God. There are certain times that we need to talk, we need to express ourselves. We have pent up emotion, we have pent up feelings. I'm talking to me. <laughs> praise God. We have these things that we don't have, and the problem is sometimes we don't even know who we can trust. Yeah. I don't know who I can tell my problems. I'm the one I don't hear about it mm -hmm. on the morning news. <laughs> yes. Right? Or it's not used against me in another way. Yes. They might not tell somebody, but they use it against you. Yes. And so we don't yes. need to trust. We need to be people who we can trust each other. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So there are certain things that we can walk off. There are certain things that we can talk off. I want to give you a scripture very quickly. This is, this is a scripture that I, uh, that I found. First Thessalonians 4.11. This is outside of this chapter, but it says, Make it your goal to live a quiet life. This is NLT. First Thessalonians 4.11. Make it your goal to live a quiet life. Mind your own business. And work mm -hmm. with your hand, just as you instructed you before. That's good, eh? Amen. Yes. Amen. So we have, we have you know, somebody come and tell us something. It's not my business to go and tell you. Praise God. So some things we can walk off, some things we can sleep off, some things we can talk about and we'll get, we'll get rid of them. But there are certain problems that no matter how much you walk, no matter how much you sleep, no matter how much you talk, the problem is still there, sister Nanda. I go to sleep and I wake up, and you go to sleep and wake up so often that even when you go to sleep, you're dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> about the problem. And this is the problem. The Bible says that the situation is so bad, folks online, the situation is so bad that the people have started to say to God, our way is cut off. There is no hope for us. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? Sometimes you're in a situation where you feel like there is no tomorrow for me. There is no coming back from this. I just have to deal with it when I'm talking to. Sometimes you're in a situation where you feel like I'm just going to have to live with this. My life is how life is. Other people are okay, but I can't, I can't recover. My dreams are dead now. Praise God. Mm -hmm. My dreams are dead now. I can't get back. I used to have dreams when I was growing up. I wanted this even years ago when I came here. I wanted that, but it's too late. And God is saying to us this morning, with me, with the I am, hallelujah, with the God who has a hand and has an eye and has an ear, the God who has fed us, the lion of the tribe of Judah is saying this morning, it is never too late for you. God. Amen. Amen. Never too late. You're not too old. Hallelujah. You're not too young. Praise God. You've not yes. been done too bad. God help me. They have not talked about you too bad. God said it is not too late this morning. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. He 
comes to Elijah, Ezekiel, brother Chris, and God asks Ezekiel a question. Ah, the, the, the thing about it is, we are used to Sister Lamida, we are good with asking God questions. We are good at that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we want to know why God why. You have to share what I'm saying here. We want to know why God why. We want to know when God when. You have to share it. We want to know how God how. We uh -oh. want to know where God where. I need my house. Praise God. You have to say amen. I need my job. I need my this. I need my that. How, where, why, when. And so we're good at asking God questions, but, but every now and then God will stop you, Sister Sally, and God says, I've got a question for you. Wow. God will stop you and say, you'll be asking all these questions. I need to ask you a question. Son of man, shall these bones, can these bones live again? Preach Pastor Gordon. He stopped him in his track, Sister Patrick. And here is the thing. Ezekiel is a man of God. What they call yeah. him, man yeah. of God. I put the D on it in America. They call him man of God. He's a man of God. He's been prophesying for God for many, many years. Brother Chris, uh, 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 brother, brother Kevin, uh, Ezekiel is prophesying for God for many years. Yeah. This is the yes. man, Pastor Mark, that told us that, that there is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. You all not hear me? This is yes. the man that told me that there are the living bees with fire on them. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? This is the man who saw God and he was prophesying for God without ceasing. For five years he prophesied for God. What are you saying, Pastor God? I'm saying he's in the presence of God. God's hand is upon him. He is hearing the word of the Lord day and night and yet still God comes in and says, I have a question for you. You all not hearing what I'm saying to you? If God has a question for the prophet, God has a question for you this morning and God is asking you, do you trust me? Y'all not hearing me? Do you believe Amen. me? Do you Amen. think I can do it? Do you think I can bring you up? Do you think you can overcome? Y'all not hearing me? Can miracle come out in your life? Can a breakthrough happen? Can sign and wonders come in your life? God says, I've got a question for you. Amen. Yes. Yes. He always asks him God questions, God, God questions and, and God says, I have a question for you. I need you to stop and answer me something. Yeah. Now when God asks us a question, because you know God will always ask us a question, and when God asks us a question, we need to not rush with the answer. We need to not tell God the first thing, what, what we say, the first thing come on what? <laughs> We need to tell, not tell God the first thing that comes to my mouth or the first thing that comes to my mind. I, I like Ezekiel. Ezekiel stops and he says, Thou knowest. Praise yeah. God. This is the prophet. He said, He said, He said, I, I've been with your God. I've seen your miracles. This looks hard, but, but I know that there is nothing. Ooh, there's nothing too hard for God. Yeah. Yes. Whenever God asks you a question, a question, two things very much. Number one, it preempts an action. God is preempting an action. What do I mean by that? In many cases, before the Lord does what He's going to do, it requires that we take an action in our lives. So He will ask us a question in order for us to, in order to preempt us to do something. Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou? Me. God, God was preempting Saul to change his life. Hello? Yeah. Praise God. Adam, Adam, where, where are you? Praise God. Yeah. And he was prompting Adam to, to check himself and say, Adam, you're out of position. <laughs> Peter, lovest thou me more than thee? Yes. I, I've got something coming up for you, Peter. I'm not sure what I'm saying to you. Yes. I've got Pentecost coming, Sister Donnett. I, I need you to be ready for Pentecost, but do you love me more than this? And whenever God asks us a question, he's preempting an action. Lord have mercy. We need to look and listen and see what God is asking us today. Because God is saying, get ready, love God. Get ready, get ready. Preempting. 
begins an action. Number two, it precedes his action. It pre It means God is saying, get yourself ready. But it also means that get ready because I'm about to do something. Amen. Yes. God help me, can, can these bones, can these bones live again, Sister Macau? Can these bones come back to life? Can these bones get up? What is God asking you today? He's creating you. He's prompting you. He's going to do something. It's preceding the action that God is about to do. And every now and then, God will stop you. God will stop your business. You know how we're busy these days. We're busy by. <laughs> God was busy by. Praise God. You have to pray about that one. And every now and then, God says, I will stop you. Lord, help me. I will make you pause so that you can consider the question. Because yes. I preempted something. I want you to change something. I want you to think about something. I want you to adjust something. I want you to adapt yourself to something. I'm about to do something. I, I just want to know, are you ready for what I'm about to do? Mm -hmm. God. You have to look at yourself and say, Kevin, get, get ready. Get ready. Get ready. God, whatever God's hand is on you, whatever God is leading you, even if he puts you in the valley, get ready. God is about to do something yeah. Amen. in your life. And so Ezekiel comes back and Ezekiel says, God, thou knowest you know God. You know. And what, God, what Ezekiel is saying is that I know that with God nothing is, is yeah, impossible. I know God that you can do anything. Praise God. I like that Ezekiel doesn't rush his answer. I like that Ezekiel doesn't tell God how the situation looks. Hello. I like that Ezekiel doesn't tell God that people in this kind of condition, they do not get back up from the dead. I like that, Sister Sally, that Ezekiel doesn't say, God, I've never seen this happen in all of my days. I, I like that Ezekiel comes back and says, God, I, I, need, I, I need you to tell me because you know what you're going to do. I'm leaning on you. Do you remember you. the man that said to Jesus, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. This is what Ezekiel he said. He said, God, in my own flesh, in me, I don't know how this is going to happen. Good God Almighty, but, but I know that you know the way. I know that you are the way maker. God help me. I know yes. that you're the one who sets a break over a troubled water, over a rough water, over a rough sea. You will open a door that nobody can shut for me. I know that you can do it, God. And Ezekiel is saying, with my God, nothing shall be impossible. And when God gets ready and he asks us a question, God is saying, think about it. I want you to remember that I am God, good God. I want you to remember that I created the heavens and the earth. I want you to remember that I call all the stars in the sky. I remember them. And yes, I call them yes. by name. I want you to remember all the years. Good God. On your head I remember. I want you to remember even your very tears. I put them in my bottle. I am not in my bottle. God is saying when I ask you a question, don't rush to the answer. Think about who is asking you. You are not hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Think about Amen. what I've done. What you've seen me do, think about what you've heard me do, think about the testimonies. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. God says, Pause and think about it. Nothing is impossible with my God. Yes, and so God is talking to Ezekiel because He wants him to know that Ezekiel, you've seen great things. But you ain't seen this yet. I'm about to show you something that you have not seen before. I'm about to do something that you have never witnessed in your life. Shall can these bones live again? Thou knowest, Lord. Do it, Lord. Somebody say, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Yes, Lord. See, see what happens is what happens is that the, the bones represent. Babylon, uh, the issues of Israel in Babylon, they've been there a long time. They're dead a long time. They've been in the situation a long time, and, and they say, we can't get out of this. 
You see, it's one thing why the devil is working against you and playing against you. Because you can you can call on the name of the Lord, you can use what God gave you. Yes. yes. When it's God that puts you in trouble. Mm -hmm. Who you gonna call on? Praise God. You got prayer partner, you got prayer warrior, you got pastor, bishop, you got archbishop, and the pope, and the case. God says, there ain't nobody here to help you, but God says, I am bringing you out of this thing. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yeah, amen. I don't know what anybody's situation is. I'm preaching to myself this morning. I love it this morning because God is telling me that I can see something that I've never seen before. Do a Amen. For me, God. Do a miracle for me, God. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? It's not too yeah. late, ladies and gentlemen. You haven't messed it up too bad. Praise God. It's a pastor. Have you seen gas prices? Uh, I wish I had. I wish I had done what I was doing. Have you seen the house prices? I wish I would. Bought, I had bought my house two, three years ago. God says it's not too late. You haven't heard what I'm saying to you. Yes. God. Amen. Praise God. Have you seen the prices of grace? <laughs> <laughs> but have you seen the prices of commodities? The prices are sky high. God says, I can supply yes. all of my needs according to his riches and glory. It's not too late, brother Chris. I don't hear what I'm saying to you. Amen. My God, I'm preaching to somebody I don't know who. So, so God says, I, I'm almost done. God says, <laughs> God says it's not too late. It's too not late. Too late. Anything can happen. A miracle can happen in your life if you believe God. Praise God. Amen. Never too late. It's never too late, Mom. And here is the thing: when you see God moving like this, I want you to know that God is up to something. Yes. Mm -hmm. God is up to something, Sister Macala. He is up to something. The problem is there. There are a couple questions that we could ask God. The question that might come to your mind when you read Ezekiel, Pastor Mark, and you think about Ezekiel, and you might say to you might say to God, God, why do you allow a situation like this to happen? Have you ever looked at God and said, God, if you're so good and you're so great and you can do nothing, you cannot fail. Why do you allow these problems to happen? Number one, why God do you allow this to happen? Uh, and number two, why don't God, God, why don't you re react? Why do you have to react? But why don't you react? <laughs> and the answer is, God loves us so much. That's he, and he created us in his own will. That God will allow us to make the choices we want to make. Israel, they made their own choice. And God says, I, I made you in my will. I gave you the ability to choose. In this case, he said, I gave you the ability to choose. And I'll allow you to choose what you want to choose. Praise God. <laughs> but when time comes for you to get out of any choices, any problem, any situation that you're in. God says, I'm God, I'm standing by, I'm working it out for you. I'm ready to pull you, I'm ready to get you, I'm ready to do something great in my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? To Amen. You? And as much as God can stop it, God says, I won't stop it because I gave you a free will to do what you want to do in the first place. But remember that I am standing by. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes, I am yes. By. I am always there. Never leaving you. Never forsaking you. God is always ready. When I cry, two things. When I cry, he's ready to get me out. When I cry, the Bible says his ear, his ear, anthropomorphism, is open unto my cry. His arm is stretched out. He's ready to hear whenever God is ready. Number two, whenever God has made a promise. Yes. When he made a promise, no matter how life turns out, God made you a promise. Say amen. God made you a promise. Amen. In the word of God, he made you a promise. Man, I wish I had time this morning to say. I know you don't have to go to, um, to dinner and everything. Your baskets and hopefully you got breakfast. 
When God made it, when God said, I, I put my word on it, I promise you, praise God. He, he, he promised Abraham, he says, Egypt, Egypt, you're going to go down into Egypt, 400 and something years. But he said, at the right time, I made that promise. I don't care how powerful theory is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This morning. Yes. Praise God. So God is up to something. God is moving. God is going to do something. And here's what I want to tell you. God doesn't react to anything. Sister Donna, God does not react to anything. What do you mean, Pastor? God does not react because a reaction is waiting for something to happen. And then once I see what happens, then I can determine what, my, what, what I'm going to do. So I have to wait for the thing to happen, Pastor Makala. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? You get what I'm saying to you? That is a reaction. You drop off the chair, then you get a quick. You know, sometimes you drop on your chair. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, Sister Lisa was telling the story about when she first came to Canada, she was running on the bus in the snow. <laughs> and she <laughs> dropped. And we were trouble this morning. But she dropped Sister Patrick and she get up fast. You know when you're shaking, you get up fast. <laughs> Praise God. But that's a reaction. God says, I know what is going to happen before it is going to happen. Hello. And so God says, I don't react, Brother Chris. I respond. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Praise God. Yes. He says there's a difference between a reaction and a response. A reaction means I don't know where you are. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what kind of problems you're going to be in. But God says, I'm going to respond. I know what you're going to do. Hello, I already have your solution. I already have it planned out. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? That's why Jesus, Amen. I am the lamb that was slain, Sister Makala, before the foundation of the earth, before Adam got into problems. Shall not touch it. What I'm saying to you, before there was an issue, before there was a problem, God says, I am going to respond. Pond at the right time. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God is up to something. God is standing by and God is ready to respond with all the force. Good God. He has all the power in his hand. He has the angel armies and they respond to his word. God says, I'm ready to respond to what you mean. Amen. Amen. Lord, mercy. Praise the name of the Lord God. He knows his own. He knows that you are his. He knows that he bought you. He knows that there is precious blood speaking for you. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Just like the blood that cried out uh, when, when Cain killed Abel. And he said the blood cried out. When the blood is still speaking this morning, it's still crying out for you this morning. And God says, as long as my blood, I will shed for you. And you accept my blood. My blood is crying out for you. I know where you are. I have a response for you. I have a, I have a force that is going to respond for the situation that you're in. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. So then it almost done here. So then he comes to uh, he comes to Ezekiel and he says, Ezekiel, I am going to respond to the problem. I am going to respond to the situation. I am going to respond to the dead bones. I just need to know, are you willing to work with me? Y'all uh, need to look at yourself and say, God, I'm willing to work with you. How are you willing to work with you? How are you getting me Whatever you say, God, I will do it. Y'all not hear what I'm saying to you. When yes. God gets ready to pull you we have to work with God, brother Chris, and say, God, I am ready and enable mm -hmm. me. Ezekiel says, Thou knowest it, God. And God was saying, All right, you know you're ready to work with me. I'm going to do a few things for you. I'm going to set you up. My God, when God gets ready to move in your life, uh, the thing I love about God, Sister Sally, is that God doesn't always just do it for me. God says, I'm going to give you some power in your own hands, brother Kevin. He said, Behold, I give you power about all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. When God gets ready to pull you out, God says, I'm giving you some power. I am going to enable you. I am going to give you a voice. I am going to give you a mount. I am going to give you a sound that when you speak, you sound like a lion. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. What you say in the name of Jesus, baby, even demons have to tremble because they think they're talking to Jesus. You all need to know how God has empowered you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. Amen. God says, I'm going to enable you. I'm going to enable you, Ezekiel. I am going to make you a partaker. Mm. I want to be a partaker of his goodness. God help me. I want to be a partaker of his power. Oh, God. I want to be a partaker of the power of God. So that when I get into my situations and I call on the name of the Lord, something has to happen. When I call on the name of God, because God has enabled me. 
Are you hearing me this afternoon? Yeah. Amen. She said, no, your God has enabled Ezekiel three things and I'm done. He says, Ezekiel, you now have power. You will have some power in your hand. I have given you something. I need you to do as I say. When God has his hand on you, when God leads you, when God brings you into a problem and he asks you a question, he's setting you up to do something next. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? He starts to set Ezekiel up and is responding. Every time God speaks to him, his hand is upon me, and I'm not fighting the hand of God. God is leading me, and I'm not going my own way. You all hear what I'm saying to you? When God says, go down there, Jonah, I am going down there. You all not catching what I'm saying to you? I am not being led. I'm being led by God. I'm not trying to lead God. Yeah, are you hearing what I'm saying to you? What God is saying is that when I lead you, walk in step with me. Amen. Walk in step with me because when I lead you, I need you to be in step. Don't try to lead God. How do I lead God, Pastor? I, I try to make my own blessings. I, I try to open my own door. I try to make my own way. I try to do my own things. And God is saying, that is not how I want you uh, to work. When you are led by me, you trust in me. You wait on me. You depend on me. And you do what I say you are supposed to do. Number one is have this year. Number two, he's led by God. Number three, even in the valley, in the messes, in the misses, in the failures, in the fault, uh, he's still trusting God. Now I'm sure what I'm saying to you. Down in the valley, I'm still trusting God. When I don't have anything, I'm still trusting God. When I can't understand what I'm going through, what I'm going through, I'm still trusting God. Even when my heart is broken, somebody has a broken this morning. God help me. Somebody's wondering why this morning but God is saying still trust me in the heartache. Still trust me in the messes. Still trust me in the valley. Still trust me when you don't understand. Still trust me when you can't reason it out. Still trust me when you're falling behind. When everybody looks like they're going ahead. God says still trust me. I want you to believe in me. I want you to know that not too late uh, that dry bones can get up, uh, that dry bones can live again, uh, that dead things can come out of the grave. Uh, I want you to know that I am God uh, and I am the resurrection. Uh, you are not hearing me uh, and I am the life. Uh, though you were dead, uh, yet can you live again uh, because my name uh, is Jehovah. I am the maker. I am the creator. I am the Adonai. Uh, I say it uh, and it is so. Uh, I say and it must come to pass. He has to trust God. In the valley, he's trusting God. And when God says, is it possible? He says, God, I don't know, but I know you. I know you can't fail. I've never seen this happen, but I know you can't fail, God. Amen. 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 And God says, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to enable you. Three things. Number one, I want you to prophesy unto them bones. Lord, help me. He says, prophesy unto the dead bones. He says, speak to the bones, the dry bones, the bones that are down there. He says, speak to it. Why am I speaking to my dead bone? Because God's word has power to speak to anything. You are not hearing what I'm saying to you. When God says, speak to your bills on the table, you better put them bills on the table and start speaking to them bills. Lord, help me. When God says, speak to the school report, Bones in your life and sustain you. Come on, these bones. Flesh, 
Come on these bones. Skin. Come on these bones. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? Number one, he says, speak to the bones. Number two, he says, I prophesy to the winds, brother Kevin. He says, you spoke to the situation. I want you to speak unto the prevailing condition, the circumstances that are around it. Not only do you speak to the situation, but you need an entire condition to change. It's not just one thing. You have to speak to the circumstances. You have to speak to the winds. Hello. You have to speak to the thing to bring back life in it. If you speak just to the bones, the bones will just be there dead with flesh on them. But he says you need the breath of life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So he says, speak to the wind and say, wind, ha, ah, blow upon this dead situation now. Blow upon this dead bone. Blow upon this body. It has come back part way, but it's not where God says you're supposed to be yet. And so I'm speaking to my situation, I'm speaking to my conditions, I'm speaking to my circumstances, I'm telling my job circumstances to change, I'm telling the people in my job, you, know, you have to act differently, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm speaking to my job, and I spoke to myself first, and to my drag board, and I said, I'm not going to quit, but number two, I'm going into my workplace, and I'm saying, workplace, condition, you have to change, you're not hearing what I'm saying to you. I'm going into my house, and I'm declaring in my house, peace, in my house, joy, in my house, rest in my house, blessing in my house. When I come into my home, I'm not going to feel heaviness, who am I preaching to? When I get into my house, I'm not going to feel stress, I'm not going to feel down, I need to hurry up. When I get into this situation, I the threshold of my front door, a peace of God, you are not hearing what I'm saying to you, needs to be in my house. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Number one, he spoke to the, to the bones. Number two, he spoke to the wind. Number three, God says you need to speak now to the people. What do you mean, Pastor? He said, I need you to speak to the people because the people have a heart condition. What is the heart condition? He says the people are going around and they are saying something, Sister Padre. They are prophesying another word. They are saying, Pastor Mark, that there is no hope for me. Oh. Y'all not hear what I'm saying to you. They are saying that I can't get up from this. They are saying I am dead. And, and you know when you speak, your words have power. Yes. And God says you have to cut that thing off. In the name of Jesus, you have to cut that thing off. He says you need to my God says prophesy to them and say your condition looks bad and speak to the heart praise God with the mouth mind confesses but with the heart he believes are you hearing what I'm saying to you and so I need to have something down in my heart that believes God that believes that no matter what because you know the problem is uh, when God gets you out uh, when you're Conditions and your situations and your circumstances change, brother Chris. If I don't believe what God is saying, I am going right back yes. into the situation. So God says, speak to the wind, speak to the bones, speak to the winds, and speak to the people. Tell them that I have power to pull them out. And God, tell them that I have power to bring you out. Tell him that I have power to carry you up and finish. He says, I have power. He says, I want you to demonstrate my power. Mm -hmm. Pastor Mark, when we believe God, God's power will be demonstrated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we doubt God, God's power will be diminished. Yeah. Hello? If I believe God, his power, Sister Patricia, is going to be demonstrated in my life. But if I don't know, God's power is going to be diminished. The Bible tells me, the Bible tells me that Jesus went to, I think it was Capernaum, near his house. And he said, we know this Jesus. We know him. We see him grow up with a barefoot boy. <laughs> run up and down. We know him. We know his mother, we know his father, we know everything about him. Mm -hmm. You call him a prophet, you call him a messiah. 
And the Bible says that he could do no mighty works there, Sister Nardo. No mighty works because of their unbelief. His power was diminished. Praise God. But, but, but God says, if, if you believe it, can these dry bones live again? I believe God demonstrates the power in my life. I just want to encourage you this morning. It's not too late. It's not too far gone. It's not too bad. It's not too broken. Praise God. For God to do a miracle in your life. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Amen.